Welcome to this video discussing Basic Intelligent Resilient Framework, or IRF. This is an HP technology that allows you to stack multiple switches into one logical switch. In this video, we will discuss some of the basics of IRF. Please refer to other videos on HP's website for discussions on advanced IRF concepts. So in this section, once again, we're going to take a look at the initial configuration of a two-unit IRF system. As a quick reminder, on Unit 1, we will first verify the existing member ID. We will then set the device priority. We will shut down the 10 gigabit port, which is used for the IRF logical port. We'll then assign the 10 gigabit port to the logical IRF port and enable it once again. We'll save the configuration and then activate the pending configuration. On Unit 2, we'll do something similar. We'll firstly check the member ID, assign a priority, shut down the 10 gigabit port, assign the 10 gigabit port to the logical IRF port, enable the interface, save the configuration, and then activate the pending configuration. The purpose of this procedure is to show that we do not have to shut down devices when adding them to an IRF system. The IRF system doesn't have to be rebooted or shut down we can simply add devices to the IRF system while it's up. So we'll start with unit one. And in this case, we connect it to the auxiliary port of IRF unit one. Now in other videos that are part of this series, I explained how to connect to the auxiliary port of the IRF system running within the HP simulator. When you connect it to the auxiliary port of a switch or IRF system, you do not see logging messages by default. So we'll firstly enter the terminal monitor command to ensure that we get to see the logging messages. So as you can see in the output, the current terminal is now enabled to display logs. So as per our script, the first command we're going to use is display IRF to verify the current IRF member ID. In this example, we can see that the current system has a member ID of one. We then go to system view and we can configure the device with a priority of 32. The default priority is one. If there's a conflict, the device with the highest priority will win and become the master device in the IRF system. Using the IRF member command and specifying the current member number, which is one, we can set the priority to 32. We can verify the change by using the command display IRF. As we can now see in the output, member one or unit one now has a configured priority of 32. In this HP simulator topology, we're gonna to connect the 10 gigabit interface 108 to unit two. So before adding the interface to the IRF logical port, we need to shut it down. So on the physical interface, 10 gigabit 108, we need to shut the interface down. So the command is interface 10 gigabit 108, shut down. So in this example, we are going to add this interface or assign this interface to the first logical IRF port. Since we're working on unit one, we'll go to IRF port one, and now we can either assign port one or two and in this case, we're going to assign one. So the syntax is unit slash port. And in this case, we're using unit or member one, port one. Under the logical IRF port, we can now assign the physical interface to the logical port using the port group command. So we type port group interface and the interface name, which in this case is 10 gigabit 108. The system informs us that we should perform the following tasks to complete the setup of IRF. So it says you must perform the following tasks for a successful IRF setup, save the configuration after completing the IRF configuration, and then execute the IRF port configuration active command to activate the IRF ports. So what this means is that we are not restricted to just adding a single physical interface to the logical IRF port, but we'd typically add multiple physical interfaces to the logical port. Even though the command line interface or CLI 
is accepting our commands as we type them, the port group settings are not activated at this point. The configuration at this point is a pending configuration and isn't live yet. You may have seen this in other places in Comware when, for instance, configuring multiple spanning tree. The advantage of doing it in this way, in other words, having an intermediate pending configuration, is that you can complete your entire configuration first, then save it, and only then put it into production. In this example, we are only going to add a single 10 gigabit interface. In other videos and demonstrations, we'll add an additional two units or two members to the IRF system. So we'll have a four unit IRF system, which will be configured in a ring topology. At this point, with two units in the IRF system, a single interface is sufficient. You could, however, if you like, use multiple physical interfaces for redundancy. Going back to the physical interface, interface 10 gigabit 108, we now need to enable the interface by using the command undo shutdown. We should save our configuration, and to do that, we can use the command save safely force. And as you can see, the configuration has been saved successfully. At the moment, please remember that the configuration is in the pending state, and I'll keep it that way to demonstrate what the effect will be when using the configuration active command. We'll do that as a last step in this demonstration. So in other words, we still need to execute the last step, activate the pending configuration. If we look at the actual physical console, we'll be able to see this happening. So as you can see here, unit two is now rebooting. So we executed the active commands so that the systems are now in production. On IRF member one, we can see that the interface went down because unit two is rebooting. So as you can see in the output, interface 10 gigabit 108 has changed to down. Because this is running in somewhere, the reboot happens very quickly. So the interface comes up quite quickly. So we can now use the display IRF command. And at this point, we can see we have one member, the current system, with a priority of 32. After a while, we get some output stating that there are changes to boards. And now when we use the display IRF command again, we can see that a standby system, member two, has joined. We can see that a virtual board has been added and changed to the normal state on slot two. And now when using the display IRF command, we can see that we have a master and a standby unit with the relevant priorities of 32 and 30. The control plane protocols are now starting their sync process with the slave unit or the standby unit. We can see in the output as an example that a batch backup has been started. And because this is a simple default configuration, the batch backup will be finished fairly quickly. In a production environment, it might take a while between the batch backup start message displaying and the batch backup finish message displaying. In other words, it takes time to back up the configuration. So in the current configuration, we can see that a line class aux or auxiliary has been created with authentication mode none and user role network admin. And because of that configuration, these settings are activated on all auxiliary ports. So even though it's not explicitly configured on the individual auxiliary port, it's available on that auxiliary port because of the class configuration. That concludes this video discussing the basics of IRF. Please refer to the HP website for additional videos, including demonstrations and videos about advanced IRF topics. Thank you for watching.